I'm Bart Foster. I'm CEO and founder of Solo Health. I want to first start with some trends in self-service technology. It's about consumer empowerment. I want to do things for myself. Checking out at the grocery store. We've seen this. We've talked about it. You guys have probably had this conference 10 years ago and said people are self-check out at the grocery store. Uh, well, they're doing it themselves, and that is happening. It's continued to happen. In fact, there's now 74,000 devices in the country. And airline kiosks, you've seen these. No longer are we waiting in line, right? It's using a kiosk. It's not all about kiosks, though. It's, it's about consumer empowerment. It's about self-service. And there's been a fundamental shift with what, from a service perspective. It used to be, what can you do for me? What can you do for me, brands? What can you do for me, retailer? And now it's, what can I do for myself? I don't want to wait in line. I don't want to you know, call and ask for an appointment and wait. I want to do it myself, and I want to do it today. Despite that, consumers are still at retail. Not everybody has the latest iPhone. Not everybody has the latest iPad. But what they are doing is they're going to the grocery store. And they're doing it 2.1 times a week. And 92% of the Americans live within five miles of a retail pharmacy. So when we think about healthcare and we think about how do we get out to the people, we need to put it where the people are. Millions of people a week are visiting these stores. Retailers have a very unique opportunity because they're in every community. There's four major health conditions that I want to just talk about and, and I'll tell you how we're really going to impact these. But these are some of the ones that are recognized by the government. Uh, visual impairment. So if you think about your eyes, they deteriorate so slowly over time. You probably haven't been to the eye doctor in the last year, I'm guessing. Um, that's probably how often you should go, and especially as you get older. You could have cataracts, glaucoma, macular degeneration. The thing with eye disease, there's no pain associated with it. You don't know. In fact, last year, 30 million Americans could have, um, were at severe risk of vision loss, didn't get a regular eye exam. 12 million people could benefit from vision correction. Glasses, contacts, they don't even know it. Uh, hypertension affects 65 million people. Uh, one in three Americans are hypertensive. Obesity affects almost a third of the country now. 79 million people are pre-diabetic. Huge, huge healthcare conditions that are going on in our country. You've seen a lot about healthcare reform. How do we reduce costs? How do we improve access to healthcare? And how do we empower people to take care of themselves? It's about consumer empowerment. So there has been some retail innovations over the last five, six years. There was a lot of talk about what's going to happen with the retail clinics. And there were big projections, and they said, we're going to have 5,000 of these retail clinics in Walgreens and CVS, and they're taking off. And they did not take off as fast as they wanted. And they didn't take off for a few different reasons. But one is they needed to really figure out what the unit economics are. And they learned a tremendous amount. In fact, they learned so much that you're going to see this resurgence. And if we talk about 2015 and where it's going to go, and I can share with you some of the thoughts, but this model will not go away. Convenience is also a big deal. And you see Target, Walmart, BJ's, right, Sears, they have optical centers inside the retail location. Sears is also doing things for hearing aids. But if we take it back to what can I do for myself, has anyone seen the Dr. Scholl's kiosk on the left? For those of you that haven't, really cool technology. So you take your shoes off, you stand on this, you interact with the device, it's, it's engaging the consumer. That product right there won the vendor of the year for Walmart's health and wellness. There's over 10,000 of these in the country. And it's because it interacts, it's engaging. This EyeSight kiosk, uh, that was our first product that was launched by Solo Health. It screens your vision, left and right eye, near and distance, visual acuity. Uh, it interacts with the people in the store, then drives them into the vision center. But what we recognize is the device has to do more. You can't have an arcade if you will, in these retail locations. Space is very, very limited. Um, but we named Solo Health for a reason. It wasn't eye care. And we had a big vision, and we're getting there, and that's where we are today. Solo Health is right in the middle of some major growth trends. One is consumer-directed health care, and the other is self-service technology. And we're putting it in retail where the people are. But we're a technology company. We're not a kiosk company. You've seen the kiosk, and we talk about it. That's just the means of the end. We're really hardware agnostic. It's the software platform that it runs on. And we'll talk about the ecosystem. But that's just the entry point. We're focused on self-service healthcare. We want to empower consumers to take care of themselves. We want to give them the tools to take care of themselves. I mentioned we spun out of Novartis. And since then, uh, we now are in nine metro markets. We've had 700,000 people use uh, the devices. 
And we recognized about a year ago, and it was Walmart and others that said, get your device to do more. And we didn't have the funding at the time, but we applied for a grant from the National uh, Institute of Health. And I didn't know at the time, actually I didn't know until later, that half of 1% of people that apply for a grant the first time get it. Uh, if I would have known that, I would have never applied. <laughs> uh, but we got it. We got a grant from the National Institute of Health, and it really raised our profile and raised our credibility. So what's happening, you've probably all seen these old, outdated blood pressure machines. There's a land grab happening. Uh, we are in a great spot to take it. And we're coming out with something that's networked, okay? So it's not just a kiosk. The kiosk is only the entry point. But it does blood pressure, vision screening, there's a scale built into the seat. You can see there's a barcode scanner on it here. And we've developed the platform so it's very flexible. So if you think about 2015, you think about these are five to seven year agreements, we need a platform that as non-invasive blood glucose happens, as uh, auditory testing happens, as different pedometers, glucometers, you want to be able to interact with the device in the store couple screenshots. So you sit down at the device, you're answering a series of questions. It'll ask you, you know, would you like to see videos? Would you like to take various tests? Do you want to create an account? So you can swipe your loyalty card, you can create an account using an email address. What that allows you to do is track and trend your information, not only at the kiosk level, but at a mobile application, at the website, and so forth. Uh, it does capture your email address. Today, 60% of the people that sit down, they put in their email address. They put in their email address because they want the results emailed to them. Well, not only are they getting the results, but we, we know their age, their ethnicity, their gender, and all of a sudden we can queue up very specific, relevant content for you. If we know about conditions and diseases, let's tell you where to go. Who are the local providers in your area that could service you? Who, what are the products that might be right for you? What aisle can you buy them on? And then it comes up with your results. There's a video host. We learned a lot through usability and, and human factors and testing. We found that this is interactive, full motion video but we recorded all those because it's all customized for an individual. So you know, I can say, because you're African American and you're over 40, did you realize that you're seven times more likely to have glaucoma? Here's what glaucoma means, and here's six doctors within a three mile radius of your house that accept your insurance. Would you like to schedule an appointment right now? Put in your email address, we email the doctor, he follows up, and it improves access to healthcare. Personalized, relevant, contextual. So it is bilingual. If I know you speak English, you're female, you say you're over 50, um, perhaps you're, you're Asian. We look at your test results, the family history. It gets really specific, and then it says, okay, uh, we think Quaker Oats is the right product for you. We send you to a mobile site. We send you a specific aisle in a store. It gets very, very personalized. But I said it's not the kiosk. This is what Solo Health is about. It's an ecosystem around health and wellness that we're developing. The entry point is the kiosk. There's hundreds of sites that are out there doing health and wellness. They're all trying to compete with WebMD, right? That's the big leader. But what they all have to do is they have to spend millions of dollars to get people to go to their site. What we're doing is we're putting a kiosk as an entry point in high traffic retail environments. But because they're all networked through a wireless connection, we don't have to go through the retailer's firewall. We plug it in. It's wirelessly connected. The in-store component, so it's advertising, it's coupons, it's data exchange. We're then sending people to a mobile site, a web application that's being developed this year. The data insights becomes a really powerful tool because again, now we know age, ethnicity, gender. We can look at population health. One of the reasons the National Institute of Health funded us is they wanna know how many people in Austin were hypertensive versus the ones in Dallas. On a Tuesday that spoke Spanish, as an example, right? We can get down to that level. We can drill down to the kiosk level. We can push content out. We can pull content in. Uh, it's very powerful. Also with the data insights, because you're creating an account, now we can send you and, and let you package that data and send it to Google Health, Microsoft Health Vault, if you have a patient health record, and send it in to that. Local providers, that's an important piece in our revenue stream. So. Today, we have over 600 optometrists, ophthalmologists listed in our system. We're now expanding that. General practitioners, integrated delivery systems, large hospitals. So if you need help with a certain condition, there'll be someone that calls you and they can help you. And then insurance companies, they play a very big role. Because if we can reduce healthcare costs, 
ultimately everybody wins. And the insurance companies, they have the network of physicians. So we're going to partner with not just one, we'll partner with most of them uh, to help roll these out. And they have a vested interest to do it. The platform, it drives in-store traffic. Uh, we've proved that. Retailers loved it, but they needed it to do more. That's why we're going to take this blood pressure machine space. What's interesting, 68% of the people that test their blood pressure in retail, they do it more than once a month. So it brings frequency too. We've shown that sales go up between 8 and 12% of relevant products, not just for us, even the, the other kiosk companies that have been out there. But there's a new term that I, I want to talk to you about, and that is point of interaction. We're terming this point of interaction because we've recognized, and we talked to media companies and, and brand managers and buyers, they said, we can't put you in a box. I said, okay, you know, we really don't want to be in a box. We're thinking outside the box, okay. They said, so how do we price it, and is it CPM, and is it cost per acquisition, and what is it, and is it digital, or is it out of home? Is it place-based? Well, is it interactive? Well, it's kind of all of those. And we came up with a new term. It's point of interaction, which is how do you bring all these together at a point where it is digital, it's in-store, it's interactive, it's personalized, it's very targeted, and that's the point of interaction. In the point of interaction, we say POI drives ROI. Because if you reach people at the point of interaction, it's personalized and it's relevant for that individual person, right? The moment of truth for the retailer, the moment of truth for the brands. You know, the moment of truth for a consumer is when they sit down at the kiosk and they realize, oh, shoot, I'm hypertensive or I had no idea that I could benefit from glasses. So that's the moment of truth. We make money three ways today. The retailers pay small leads just like they do for the blood pressure machines. Uh, it's nominal. It's really to have them get a little skin in the game. We do a rev share back. What's nice about the rev share is our goals are aligned. So they actually have, a, have an incentive to drive traffic to their store. They, they put up signage. They drive people from the eggs over to get a vision test. And it makes sense. So the retailers pay a small lease. Local doctors pay to be listed. So general practitioners, integrated delivery systems. And then national and regional advertisers. So a lot of the brands in this room uh, what we're doing now, and we're going to be working with charter advertisers. In fact, the, the first one for the Solar Health Station for 2011 is going to be uh, AccuView, as an example, is going to have the contact lens category as an exclusive. If we can sell these by category, so let's integrate it in the email campaigns. Let's get it in the results pages. Let's get it in the videos that you can watch. Let's get it on the website and the mobile applications. Here's where this thing's going to grow. And based on some conversations that we've had over the last three months, I could really see a couple of these bars in the adders here being flip-flopped because of this land grab that's happening. Uh, and it's not just retail. So retail, it's very scalable. Um, we are going to be piloting with a big match merchandiser here, a very significant pilot. And if successful, right, they want chain-wide. I uh, just got an RFP from one of the largest grocery retailers. It's happening. It's happening now. And what's nice is it's very scalable. So if we think about shopper marketing activation, national, regional brands, we're putting people in touch with relevant, specific products, really six feet away from the products you want them to buy a lot of times. And whether it's OTC or RX products, uh, it really doesn't matter. There's several things that are going on that are the future of marketing. It's personalized. It's got to be targeted. There's got to be a social component. It's got to be integrated. It has to be integrated. Local is such a big deal. It's got to have local. It's got to be contextual, and it's got to be transparent. So in summary, the, the trend of self-service is here to stay. Uh, healthcare is top of mind. Retailers are innovating. They're providing valuable, high-touch services, a lot of different formats. And the marketing innovation and how you get information out to people, and it's, it's very fragmented but it's got to be very specific and targeted. Um, so hopefully I've shared with you some things that are insightful, maybe sparked some questions, and I'd be happy to, uh, to answer those.